taking up space. So the first section of the book, I call it the lessening um, as someone starts to unlearn their body autonomy uh, because of external sources such as, you know, parental figures, friends, community, media, and the individual begins to sow that shame and becomes then afraid to occupy space. And that can channel itself into disordered eating, which comes into the middle section of the book titled The Losing. So I'll read a couple from The Lessening and The Losing. And I hope these, these poems, uh, my intention is that they bear witness to what it is like to fear one's body, an inescapable fear. It's being haunted from the inside out. First storm. We would not choose our tights. We would not stop wailing. We would not stop the thunder tucked under our blouses. It rose and rumbled. We brushed toothpaste from our hair. Mum held a bag of bagels, a dozen freezer burnt fists. Damn you girls, damn you careless girls. We crayoned the air. C majored on dead bird recorders, carved cusses beneath the lazy Susan with keychains. Mum slammed the bag on the counter. The bagels burst like angry stars. The first storm in our house, it rained in wheat. And Mum said, help me on hands and knees. We gathered bagels in our dresses. We did not count them. We did not choose a winner. Mum's eyes skating rinks. We sat round and with folded hands faked grace. I don't know how to be a hungry woman. I was never taught and I don't seek the lesson. I watch women bite into sandwiches at diners once their husbands return to work. Watch them suck chocolates while walking their dogs. I too have learned these things and my body scrapes back with hunger. Men I know and like eat bowls of noodles loudly. I crave only broth and sound. A 10 year old girl stomps around on TV refusing buttered toast. Her pageant is in two days and she touches her legs and cries. At her age, I could silence my hunger so fully. I'd press two pillows to my belly at bedtime, wear my father's headphones, blare acid rock, each sound thinning into the next. I'd count out loud as high as I could and dream I was born with a gift, that I was the first girl ever alive who could survive on skim milk, water, and peaches. This next poem is a form poem. It's a sestina. So you'll hear the six, same six N words repeated throughout um, at the end of every line. Women in my family sleep, calm as blood brute, slowly curled, hands across chests. In bleached out dreams when fever breeds, we feed our hair to the folds of fire, lose our humid heads on sheets so gray. Mum sheets blackest, yes, mum allows herself to stain, to fail, shakes her pillow, all thunder and failure, on eider down, on bloody fleece. In sleep, when does my body shake like mum? Do our spines know the incense in our chests? Do our spines know of horses, wet windows, things that die in jars? Hot headed, we piss green tea, spew honeyed mucus, thickened bread. And I lean over the toilet, heave sourdough bread. The eruption, the flare up, my head on porcelain. I failed my tired neck. I was done. Rest my head. This will be all right. Flu fever remembers long sleeps when I was lucky. 16, flat chested, my head on porcelain, my bile fistfuls of autumn mums, skirts taken in at the waist, in at the waist, in and in, and mum left over mothering me. Mum, a dying ember, fixed me constant pancakes, flour heavy in my chest, stinging like oregano oil on the backs of tongues. Mum wanted me to fail at bulimia, the losing. 
I used to love the losing. I'd lose my throat to sleep, cut my hair so no one knew it was falling. Heat rose from my thinning head. There was every bit less of me. Our faucets, rusting cherub heads, eyes unsplit, spilling. Mum does not doubt their death. Mum soaps my arms, soap down the drain like sleep, like bile, burns pores cleaned, freckles thorned, rough and red. We can never make sense of mourning. Mourning is light, the frail skin of a boy who laid hands on my chest in high school, wanting the times I was richest in all wanting. A body will sleep and sweat, heads back to its wanting. If I mother myself quiet, I will fail into rivers. I will river in sweat, these healthy stains, sap unforgiving as mum. She is the times I wasn't kind, the times I was no thought, all breath. A body is reminded in sleep how to fail a dream. Wake, waking stinks like stitches, the breath of mum, her mouth black thread on my chest, my hips. My head cannot split, cannot breed clean thought, cannot stray from diamond hard sleep. And the next one I'll share is called Houses. It's in four parts. And it kind of chronicles the speakers dwindling um, and getting more immersed into their disordered eating. Houses. One, I am 15 when I become sick. Our house grows a gold door. The yard shrinks. Night turns to fabric. I let myself break in its thick fleece. Library copy of mouse forever tucked under my arm. A cordless phone sometimes. Thursdays, I look after Madeline. In that house with halogen lights, no crackers in the pantry, a hurricane sounding bathroom. I give up on Madeline often. Let her wrap restless limbs around stair railings, a game she calls choke the snake. I am always hungry, my hands slight. I burn my tongue with boiled water to keep from eating. All I see are crumbs around mouths, mouths that drip. She's sick, she's sick. All faces are oil leaked from paintings, pleating like light in lake water. Two, I live my last year of high school, lights off, drink tap water without permission. My sisters are not to drink it in our new house. It comes from a well, has too much sulfur. I'm frugal for the sake of it. Salvage coffee filters for flower pot lining. Save carrot tops for pesto. Conserve heat. Keep lamps away from the furnace. In this house, I do not touch myself. The slits of bedroom blinds too much. Mornings, I slide my skirts past legs unshaven. My hips cramp as though they have sinned. I eat one meal a day. Grind my teeth at the excellence of steamed carpet, a carpet that wants to remember me, the bare weight of me. Peace becomes the wine of my door hinge. Three. Grandpa's cabin, the only place I find fullness. A view of Mount Baker, peaks fat with snow, seam to thick cloud. Sandbars three miles out. Silver lump suckers in tidal pools. I let them float in my upturned sun hat. Seawall graying, but for two names, Gabe and Myrtle. They vandalize their love on the seawall. All I want to be is in love on the seawall. The lump suckers in capture give way to a sense of stunning control. I love their bodies, these ocean coins. Think of most things in wealth, in weight. Sand clings to the cuts in my mouth. Salt does not sanitize loneliness, only reminds me that people are not the cause of all pain. When the tide is in, that untamed water, I float and wonder how long it would take to cough up my entire childhood. Four, my first time away from home, I live in the pit of a stomach, a wet basement beneath a couple who grind Viagra into their protein shakes, rinse empty milk jugs thoroughly, bathe their bones loudly, everything loudly. I thank my rotting mouth and my fireplace where I lay birch strips, 
my ex's name on them. Liam will touch the moon in Thailand, will dream up crater dust along the edge of his mouth. I sleep often without alarms. All I know are railing less stairs, wake to ceiling plaster in my hair. I cook dinner for a cattle driver, three times my age, my only friend. She smells like fennel. She never listens. I shuck oysters at the sink, my left hand stinking and oceaned until her plate is saw streaks, piles of drained, sherried shells. She is so full and I do not sit down. And I'll just read one more uh, for you folks. This one is kind of on the more severe range of the individual being now treated in, in hospital for the eating disorder. Ottawa General, Eating Disorder Ward. I am lost in a brown chair, asked, do I like ice cream when I do not like anything? My stomach remembers two answers. It was Robin who told me to lose weight for the first time at Vanessa's gymnastics birthday party. Robin made me run in circles while other girls held each other on balance beams. I remember the sweat in my palms, saying no to birthday cake, girls pinching their stomachs at me, not knowing this would instill a morning habit in me, not knowing their words might turn my clavicles to metal. I remember my mother looking at me through her rear view at a red light, saying, please stop pinching yourself. Why do you like to pinch yourself? The answer I gave her, the bigness of me was once so small. And now it would be more present than anything ever could be. The doctor presents a cup of cozy shack rice pudding. And I know my parents sold me out, told him it's my favorite. All sugar has become excessive and false. Bribes drip with syrup, voices honeyed, premeditated. I taste the doctor's words and the buttered weight of what health now means to my withered body, lanugoed arms, thinning mine. He offers me a spoon, says, you've earned the right to eat this. In the stairwell, I eat three raisins and phone my father. A nurse races down the stairs, gripping a needle freshly filled with someone else's blood. When can I rest in this body? I've been dying to rest in this body. Thank you very much. Wow, thank you, Mallory. That was an incredible reading. The poems are already so good on their own, but the way you read them was amazing. Um, okay, so we'll pass it on to Loren. I think you have slides. Okay, can everyone see this okay? I'll yeah. Put full screen, I think. All right. It still looks good. Okay. Um, okay, wow. Yeah. Mallory.